Hi, I'm Jordan. In this Abacus video tutorial, we'll walk through how to analyze a composite cylindrical pipe under uniaxial loading. The main focus of this tutorial is creating a composite material, so we'll use simple geometry and loading in our analysis. The thin shell pipe has a radius of 15, a length L of 100, and a compressive load P applied to one edge with a magnitude of 1000. For boundary conditions at the base of the pipe, all displacements and rotations are fixed. At the edge where the load P is applied, all displacements and rotations are fixed at zero except the displacement along the cylindrical axis. We'll be creating a composite layup with the anisotropic material properties given in the table on the right. Each ply has a thickness T equal to 0 0.2, and the plies are numbered 1 through 6 starting from the bottom. This composite layup is defined as a 0 plus or minus 30 degrees symmetric layup. And this notation indicates that the orientation of plies 1 through 3 are 0, 30, and negative 30 degrees. The red lines on each ply in the figure indicate this orientation. And the subscript S indicates that the layup is symmetric such that plies 4, 5, and 6 have the orientations negative 30, 30, and 0 degrees. To perform this analysis in Abacus, we'll need to create a composite laminate with anisotropic material properties. When creating this layup, we'll need to define a reference orientation so each ply can be oriented correctly. We'll run a static analysis using 3D conventional shell elements, specifically the four-noted quadrilateral S4 element with full integration. Conventional shells in Abacus mean that the analysis is only performed on the mid-surface of the shell. And in this case, the mid-surface lies between plies 3 and 4. Let's open up Abacus and get started. Start by clicking on Create Part in the sidebar. We'll rename this to Composite Pipe. And we're going to create a 3D deformable shell and click on Type Extrusion, and then set the approximate size to 200. To sketch the part, we'll use the Create Circle tool, and set the center point as the origin of 0, 0, and then for the perimeter point, 0, 15. And that's it for this simple geometry, so click on the X, and then Done. For the extrusion depth, we'll enter 100, which is the length of our pipe, and then click OK. To create the composite material, we'll move to the Property module, and then click on Create Material. Again, we'll rename this material as Composite Material, and then click on Mechanical, Elasticity, and Elastic and we'll switch the type to engineering constants and then plug in the nine engineering constants that are shown on the right hand side of the screen in the table. Click OK once you're finished. To define the composite layup, click on the Create Composite Layup button on the sidebar. We'll use three plies initially, and make sure the element type is set to Conventional Shell. First we'll define the orientation by setting the definition to Discrete. Then click on the little pencil button to define this orientation. 
Then click on the arrow for editing surfaces and click anywhere on the surface of the part and then done. For the primary axis, we can click on the arrow again and then select the edge closest to us and then done. So now our normals follow the part geometry and the primary axis is oriented in the circumferential direction of the cylinder. Then for the regions, we can right click on region and then edit region, click anywhere on the part and then done. To assign the material, we can right click on material and then edit material. Make sure our composite material is selected and then OK. For thicknesses, enter 0.2 for each. And then for rotation angle, 0, 30, and then negative 30 degrees. If you click on one of the different layers or plies, notice that the orientation shows the rotation angle. So our one direction for the negative 30 degree ply is oriented slightly away from the reference orientation. Then click on Make Calculated Sections Symmetric and then OK. Then click on the Query Toolbar button and Ply Stack Plot. And this will let us view what the laminate looks like. Then by clicking on anywhere on the part, we can view the Ply Stack Plot. And it shows all the thicknesses are 0 0.2. And since we clicked on the Make Symmetric box, we now have six plies with symmetric orientations and the orientations are shown by the red lines. So let's close up these windows and expand the main viewport. And then move to the assembly module to create an instance. So click on the Create Instance button, and we'll leave the options as the defaults and create a dependent instance. Then move to the Step module and create a step. We'll create a static general step, and we can again leave these options as their defaults. To get certain outputs such as the stresses and strains in each ply, go to Output, Field Output Requests, and create, and then continue. Then select under domain, composite layup. And in the output variables, we can select S under stresses, and then E under strains. At the bottom of this window, if you want to output the results at the top, middle, and bottom of each ply, you can select that output but here we'll just leave it as middle. Now we'll move to the load module and create the compressive load by clicking on create load and then choosing shell edge load. Select the closest edge and enter a magnitude of 1000. Then click on Create Boundary Condition. And select Displacement Rotation. After clicking Continue, we'll select the closest edge. Here, click on all the boxes except for U3. 
So we're fixing all the displacements and rotations along this edge except for the one along the cylindrical axis. Then you click on create boundary condition again and we'll set up the fixed displacement rotation condition on the far edge. So select the far edge, then click done and check all the boxes. And in this case, since we're fixing all the degrees of freedom, we could have used an NCASTER support. Next, in the mesh module, click on the global seeds button. And since we created a dependent instance, make sure you have parts selected in the top toolbar. First, try an approximate global size of 0 0.2. And then after clicking on Apply, you'll notice that this is far too fine of a mesh for this geometry and loading. So let's try a global size of 2. Then click OK. In the mesh toolbar at the top, Select element type. Make sure shell is selected under family and we'll use a linear quadrilateral with full integration and S4 is the element type. To mesh the part, click on mesh part in the toolbar and then yes at the bottom. This completes the setup of this analysis. So now we're ready to create a job and submit it. So right click on jobs in the model tree on the left-hand side and then create. We can leave all these options as their defaults and then expand this menu, right click again, and then click on Submit. If you get that warning, uh, it's just for overwriting a job that has the same name. So it's probably a good idea to rename your job something other than job one, job two. Otherwise you'll be overwriting job one repeatedly like I'm doing here. Now our job has completed, so let's open up the results. We can view the stresses and strains in the usual way by clicking on the plot contours on the form shape. If we want to see what the reference shape looks like at the same time, if you hold down on the plot contours button and select the third option, you'll get both sets of geometry. So notice how in the legend, we only have the stresses or strains displayed for layer one or the bottom plot. So to view the results for stresses and strains in each of the different plies, click on result and then section points. Then select plies under selection method and choose the ply that you wanna see the results for. So if we switch back to stresses and then select apply three and then apply, we get a different result. And then notice how in the legend, we're now viewing apply three and the middle point of apply three as well. If we had selected the top, middle and bottom layers, when we created the field output request, we could choose different points within each layer as well. You can change the variable that you're viewing in the usual way by clicking on the stress or strain or displacement values back in the main toolbar.
And that wraps up this tutorial, so thank you for watching.